What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, your host. So today when it comes to macOS Sequoia, I'm happy to let you know that we have a new software update. And as you can see right here, this is the fifth pointed update for macOS Sequoia 15. And this one is beta one and it comes in at 2.68 gigs. Now, obviously this is not all that Apple released. You can see they released the first beta iterations of versions of all these updates, watchOS 11.4, visionOS 2.5. We have tvOS 18.5, macOS 15.5. Of course, this is the video for that. And we got iOS and iPadOS 18.5 beta one. Most of these I do cover on the channel. So definitely do subscribe so that you don't miss out. Now what I'm going to do is quickly update my device and then we're gonna look at the new features and changes that this software update has to offer. Just like that, my Mac has now been updated to the latest version. If we go to the software update page, give it a few seconds, you will see, I just wanna check that the check mark is still there. And of course, after a few seconds, it will check for an update and find that I'm on the latest build and you can see the check mark that I'm referring to macOS Sequoia beta 15.5. I feel like this is reversed. It should say macOS uh, Sequoia 15.5 beta, but hey, we'll see whether Apple works on that in the next beta. But right now you can see the check mark is there. And now just to see the new software changes and how much storage is taking, you can see for me, usually this averages 22 point something gigs and it's now calculated 22 point six five gigs i feel like it's maybe a hundred megabytes larger because i usually average 22.4 22.5 but if we click on the more info tab right there you can see the new build number that we have with this update it's 24 f 5042 g the g at the end tells you that this update is highly unstable and apple intelligence has also slightly increased by 100 megabytes just comparing with my previous averages that i had with the Mac macOS 15.4 update. So both the Apple intelligent storage and macOS storage have increased and maybe this increased because Apple intelligence is slightly taking up more space. Now, in terms of what's new or what this software update has to offer. Now, since we are approaching WWDC and this is the fifth pointed update for macOS Sequoia, there actually isn't a lot that has changed, but some of the similarities that iOS got are here and you can see now every time you go to this um, general and then you go to the Apple Care and Warranty, even though you have opened or reloaded the window multiple time, this window is a bit glitchy. It always takes some time to load. And you can see, you know, the loading picker here is, takes its sweet time. But now you can see this has been updated slightly. I feel like there's a lot of wasted space here at the top. And at the same time, you can see this device that I'm on. If I click on it right there, you can see this page has slightly been updated and the same changes carry over with the latest iOS 18.5 beta. If you open up this application, the email app, they've now implemented another update that's there on the iOS as well. And it's now here on the view options tab. And if you click on it, you can see here, you still have the option to show categories and you now have the option to show contact photo which you see right there so if i click it now you can see these have contact photos that are showing up right there and you know it's loading some of my messages right there. and then if i click that at the same time i have the ability to just switch off the contact photos i feel like it's a pretty good addition to the mail app just makes it more personalized and it makes you feel like it's it's a bit of a you know like a messaging platform or social media platform in a bit just a little bit not much but before you still had the option i believe by going into the view options and then you had the option to go to where it says show contact photo but that's a good addition that's here depending on your previous search history or what window you were in within the system settings it's actually going to give you an updated history that you can jump into which is good and will help you save time if you're jumping back and forth between different settings or different sections within system settings another thing that has been updated here has to do with apple intelligence this update now fixes an issue for users where apple intelligence would actually not work until it finishes downloading in the background so you would restart your mac or update your device and then you would see a loading bar that says apple intelligence is downloading so that 
has been fixed with this update. If you are a person that uses different VPNs within browsers, well, the previous macOS 15.4 actually fixed an issue where VPN, where if, if it was a dedicated VPN application and you try and access the internet, it wouldn't actually let you do that. But now with this one, it takes that a little bit further by fixing issues where users were experiencing connectivity issues while using VPNs within different browsers. I believe UC Browser and Opera Mini were some of the affected ones and after you update you should be able to continue using your internet without any issues on this update. Another fix that this update introduces has to do with display and to be specific right here you can see the Pro Display Calibrator. It had an issue where using the Pro Display Calibrator causes a system reboot on the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros with M4 but now after you update that is no longer going to be an issue. Another fix that this update offers has to do with those users that are using external USB or wireless or USB-C connected mice where they had to first run mouse glide in order to get it to work properly. Now with this update, a number of users have reported that that is no longer an issue and it has been resolved. Another thing that I wanted to update you on is that you probably know that if you have the AirPods Max with USB-C, the Lightning ones are not supported, but the USB-C now have lossless audio and ultra low latency that has been introduced to those AirPods. But something actually happened where Apple released an AirPods Max firmware version and then they actually recorded it so now they have actually released a newly updated one which you see right there with the firmware version number 7e101 before it was 7e99 now this is the newly updated one for the airpods max and it brings these features that you see right there and these are not just limited to the iphone if you have like an ipad or a mac that's updated to mac os 15.4 or newer including this 15.5 you can update your AirPods Max to the latest firmware version, which you see right there, 7E101, and you'll be able to get the lossless audio and ultra low latency that you see right there. And there's a way you can update your AirPods using your iPhone, iPad, or even your Mac. So this is something that you might want to check out if you have the AirPods Max. I'm a bit disappointed with this update in the sense that it actually isn't bringing a couple of features that we were promised. For example, if we go into the notifications on the iPhone, we've heard priority notifications for some time, but as you can see right there, we don't have priority notifications. I thought this might be the one that would introduce that. And at the same time, for users in the EU, iPhone mirroring, at least from what I've been able to find, isn't yet available so maybe apple is pushing this for a later update but yeah it would be nice for those people in the eu to get this and least but not last you know we are waiting for the newly updated siri and apple intelligence with contextual awareness that hasn't yet been introduced now if we go into the apple developer page just to quickly show you the release notes for this update you can see apple doesn't tell us much they tell us about you know the calibrator issue that i highlighted and there's a resolved issue that has to do with stock it and that's basically the only two things that they tell us but one of the issues that's existing right here has to do within the wallpaper so if you are actually going to the wallpaper and choosing your own custom color irregardless of the color that you select or the opacity you can see it always now reverts to this white background but if you choose any of the preset solid colors right here that's no problem you can see it shows and they are working good and you know all 19 selections are good but keep in mind that if you're trying to add your own custom for now it's just showing the white blank screen and i'm seeing this on my main display as well as my external monitor as well when it comes to performance with this update i'm actually pretty impressed for 
a beta one that has a G at the end. So I ran Geekbench 6 on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro just to see how good it is. And compared with macOS 15.4, where for single core, I got a score of 2104. And for multi-core, I got a score of 7833. This one actually edges that by giving me performance figures for single core which are 2260 and for multi core 9596 which is much much more than the 7833 multi core score that 15.4 had so at least with this update, Apple seems to be doing something right. With regards to when we might actually see the next update coming out, usually what Apple does for the first few initial betas of a pointed update, we, they usually go on a two week release cycle. So most likely next week on the 7th, we won't see an update. So the macOS 15.5 beta 2 is expected on the 14th. And then maybe we might jump the 21st and then beta 3 might come out on the 28th. And then after beta 3, we'll actually or most likely be going to weekly release cycle. And also not forgetting that WWDC 2020 25 was recently announced and it's going to take place on june 9th I feel like before we get mac os 16 apple is most likely going to release mac os 15.4.1 just to patch some of the issues that users have already experienced with the official mac os 15.4 now other than that that's about it for me when it comes to this update if you like this video definitely do hit like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video my name is ben and i'm signing off